Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be exploring Unreal Engine 5 and I have a lot of years of experience with Unreal Engine 4 from its release so I'll be looking at, at the new tool that it's almost looks looks and feels the same but at the same time feels really new so first thing that I notice is we have this content drawer that we can open up clicking here or uh, control space and it, it, it works as a content browser if we need the content browser we can find it I believe here it is content browser and I use this a lot to put it in the in my second screen so I have a vertical second screen where I have like two or three, uh, usually two. Let me open a, another content browser and I stack them like this. So I can I can have a lot of assets and, and a lot of blueprints uh, really near in my grasp. And I don't have to look around too much to find it. So let me put it on the other screen just to get comfortable. But I believe I believe that if I do Ctrl P, yeah, we can also open an asset. I'll add the starter content so I I have something to show. And it works exactly the same. Add we have this menu that it's also present if we right click here. But I want add. Now we have add quicksell content, but I wanted the starter content. So content pack, starter content, add. So this is about the same. I pressed play uh, a minute ago. It works exactly the same. But um, there, there is a cool feature here that I discovered where you in Unreal 4, you can right click in any place and press play from here and you won't start from the the default uh, location that it's determined by this player, player start, right? But it was a pain in the ass trying to right click here, play from here and do, ev do it every single time, but now we have Spawn player at current camera location. Then we press play. And we play from where the camera is. Really useful. Really, really useful. So let's keep exploring. We have the command console here. Uh, this was hidden behind, behind the tilde key that my keyboard is in Spanish, but if I change it, you can see the tilde and it auto selects the console command or the other way that I used to recommend people of doing this opening the, the command the console command so you can input some commands was window and going to the output log and here in the output log there is also a console command so this was another way to Open up the console command if you didn't have a tilde key. And it's useful because sometimes uh, most translation of this program is not really that good. For example, the Spanish one, we can change it easily. Doing culture. Yes. And if I did that, you can see that my editor has immediately change language like archivo editar ventana but sometimes tools that it would be translated to herramientas but it doesn't work that well right so the translation is lacking it's not that it's unreal 5 and it doesn't have a good translation but the translation was lacking also in unreal 4 so it's best also to have it in english because most of tutorials are in english so having a console command here is really useful. 
to save some time. Culture growth and and now we have it. Something that has remained exactly the same and I have forgotten to enable is the stats. It's true that you can see the FPS here, show FPS and show some stats. Here it is, more advanced stuff, but if you don't want it here, the FPS, let me remove it. You can go to um, window and let me find where the editor settings are. Here it is in edit, editor preferences. And under performance, well, it was here in Unreal 4. Yeah, here it is, show frame rate and memory. And this puts some useful information here in the in the main toolbar. So you, you can have the FPS, memory, objects, and also stalls. Well, that's new. So yeah, that's that's good to know. To talk about more about the toolbar, we have it a lot more simplified and this gives us a lot more space for the viewport, which is really the most important part. We have the bo cinematic button here, the blueprints where we can access the level blueprint and change the game mode. Also, we can change it in the world settings, settings, world settings. And here we have it. And also, we have Focus Content Browser here, open more windows of Content Browser, open Marketplace, that's awesome, Quixel Bridge, and I used to play around a lot with BSPs, and instead of having the Create, well, Place Actor panel, we have this Create button that drop, has a drop-down that it has the same functionality, right? Place Actor panel. And if I want to create a shape, I can do it easily. Drag a static mesh here. If I want a, a BSP, here I would need to click on Place Actor Panels and go to Geometry. And we have the BSPs we have before. Here is also the panel the old panel and here I can drag and drop my PSP brushes like stairs and I can go to the geometry well the brush editing mode and I start messing around like I always did in Unreal 4 to create some programmer art now let's go to blueprints and see what has changed. So let's create a blueprint and let Unreal Engine 5 surprises. Blueprint, new empty blueprint class. It will ask for, for a base class. This match is the same. I'll create an actor. Oh, it I, I don't have this folder. I believe it is auto-suggesting me this folder. Um, the, the correct way would be to create a new folder and call it the same as our project. And inside it, then I can have a folder called Blueprints. But it's cool that it, it can auto-create a Blueprints folder for me. A uh, new Blueprint, well, let's call it Cool Blueprint. And now let, let's check the editor. It probably looks the same, but it's good to, to do some scouting and playing around the the new tool. So let's let's see. We have the viewport. Everything is darker. <laughs> and well, we have tabs here. If needed. Components same components. Niagara is now replacing Cascade. We have point light here if we need it. We have static mesh probably. Yes, static mesh. Static mesh. Oh, they reduced some of the 
the icons because maybe they were too large. I want a cylinder. Here it is. Component tick, physics. Looks almost the same. Lining, rendering, navigation, virtual texture. The events. And well, the transform, scale, movable. We can select a, a category. We can create a new category. Cool category. And we, we can select for every other asset, right? Then we have my blueprint tab. Looks almost the same. Event graph. It's some cool new design. Construction script. Let's add, I don't know, a debug string. Yeah, it's working almost the same. Spawn, emitter, application. Can I do this? Get actor location. I'll destroy. Let me select an explosion. This is a classic. Classic explosion. So yeah, it's working almost the same. Event dispatcher here, variables. If I want to create a variable, well, it now shows the name. Yeah. Cool variable. Boolean. I can select anything I want, maybe a vector. If I right click, it should uh, give me some options. If I right click here, I can make it into an array set. I was looking for making an array fast in Unreal 4. You can you could right click here and it would auto convert into an array by, but we can also change it here, right? So no no big deal. We can compile here. We can yeah, we can save on Success only, always jump to error node, save. We can browse in the content browser. It has pop up in my content browser uh, on the on the left. But I, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna see if it pop ups. Yeah, it pop ups here in the content drawer that it's a really cool idea here. Like a content browser that can pop in and out. It Oh, it's so cool, man. Yeah, we can hide unrelated nodes. So, yeah, this 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 match is the same. So, all in all, it's pretty similar. We have the same controls, the same hotkeys, commands, and... And yeah, the cool content drawer here. You can toggle that bubble. A little more, more control. Uh, what we would be left to do here is check here in the editor preferences if something has changed. Maybe an experimental. Um, and in source control, I'm trying out Rider, and I, I guess it supports it. <laughs> I'll check around uh, the Rider forum if it's true. And in the Blueprint editor, well, this was already already here. You can draw some midpoint arrows. Item related nodes, expose parameters, autocast objects. That's pretty much the same. So this has been a, a playing around the engine, see if a, a, anything is real, has changed a lot. And it hasn't. Mostly the user interface is darker. I, I like it. But from a developer standpoint, if you're using only blueprints, we'll see in code in other videos but if you're using blueprints then 
most of the editor stuff has remained the same. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. See you next time.